these kids are they're they're just humans they're little humans that just want to be understood and and cared for that's that's the goal for every everyone every person right we just want to be understood cared for loved um and they didn't choose you know maybe what they were born into or what hardships that they face every day um but what we can do as adults grown adults who have a lot of abilities and we have jobs and we have we have the ability to give um you know we can we can see who who needs the help in our community and and how can i help them and really will it take so much away from me to to help them it it's like it's a matter of time and honestly you'll probably gain in the end to help them Well, Ani uh, Jermakian and I are here with you today, and we are part of a group called Fragments of Healing. So what's that? We are concerned about the world and the people around us. We desire God's just justice and peace, and we want Christ to reign. And we are convinced that all of us, you, us, all of us working together can bring bits or fragments of healing to a world that is pretty broken. So we have Ani Jermakian here <laughs> of the Springfield Jermakians. Mm -hmm. Awesome family. Hello. Um, Thank you. you. <laughs> I'm a good family. I love you guys. I Thank miss my you. days uh, in the Merrimack, <laughs> in that valley. Of, <laughs> they um, miss you too. Oh, man. It was a good day. So mm -hmm. look, tell us a little bit about your work and what you do and who your children are. Sure. So I am an art educator, an art teacher in an elementary school in Springfield, um, the Springfield Public School District, which is the second largest in the state. So right behind Boston. Um, and the community that I serve is mostly technically in poverty. Um, most of them, over 95%, um, rely on the school lunches, free school lunches and breakfast, free breakfast. So um, you can imagine that COVID remote learning was definitely um, a huge challenge for them. It, it, it posed a lot of extra challenges um, for them. Um, so yeah, but I, I teach grades K through five. So I have a unique responsibility <laughs> where I teach every single child of the school. So 350 students. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 that's the second largest district in Massachusetts. Yeah. You, you guys are responsible for a lot then. We are. You have a lot on your shoulders. Definitely. I feel like, um, you know, I've talked with my colleagues before that we're almost like a like a second parent to them. Um, we see a lot of their emotions and a lot of a lot of things that come out in our setting that might not come out at home. Um, they might bring it from their home. Something happened that night or that morning, um, and sometimes we take the brunt of it. My colleague actually said that to me when I was having a hard time with how a student reacted um, to me in class, and she said, "You know, something probably happened at home," and we unfortunately were there for them. I mean, not unfortunately, but fortunately we're there for them every day, but unfortunately we get the brunt of um, of them releasing their emotions. So that's a lot. That's a lot that we handle, but. But it's cool. They release their emotions. Yeah, it is cool. That's, it is also cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so you, you got 350 kids you can really touch and, and be there for. They can yes. vent. They can be creative. They can be at home. You left at 10 in the morning. Wow. Absolutely. What, a, what an you awesome, not just responsibility, what, what an awesome opportunity. Definitely. Oh, my God. It is such an opportunity. I feel like I am so blessed every day to uh, to be able to be part of a, a home for them. Hey, tell me. I'm interested. <laughs> tell me a little. I went and now I want to see some of their artwork. I'm interested in these budding artists you have in, yeah. in inner city Springfield. Definitely. So um, this is a really amazing place um, where I display their artwork every month or so. I would say I do a new display. Um, 
And we have a new building this year, actually. So that is another amazing blessing. Um, I feel so fortunate. I have my own art room, which is not very common for art teachers. Um, and this is a space where I just kind of made it into a museum. So yeah. Oh, this is um, where they were collaborating on one big piece. So a big part of what I teach, I really want them to feel like they're all part of one, one initiative and one, one community, one goal. Um, and I feel like a display is, is a huge part of that because they're all separate individual pieces that go into one big, uh, like museum. <laughs> so this was team building for sure. Um, this is, uh, cultural. So this was Hispanic heritage month. Um, and they did self portraits. So they did self portraits inspired by Picasso as well as, um, Frida Kahlo. So two Hispanic artists. Oh, so they these learned are, about yep. Picasso, huh? They did. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I know. And oh. Yes. And the interesting thing is... Um, How many of our viewers know who they are? Okay, go on. <laughs> the interesting thing is like um, Picasso, I know everyone says he's obviously the most iconic, the most famous artist, but I try to introduce him right in the beginning because his artwork, they look at it and they're like, that's so weird. What do you mean? That looks like a little, like a little kid did it. And I'm like, yes, it's supposed to be weird and it's supposed to be unique. And that I think is a really good starting point for us in a relationship, an educator and a student. There's no rules when it comes to your artwork. Like you can truly, you can be weird and you can be unique and, and it's cool. <laughs> so that's a huge part of my classroom. These are also cultural. Um, they're called ojalatas um, and they're like kind of mirrors. So we put tin foil in the center of them um, in the Mexican um, heritage. So those are really fun. So the African-American kids are learning about Hispanic kids culture. Too. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So my school, the district is mostly Hispanic. Um, and then there's also a large black community. Um, so yeah, they're definitely learning about each other's uh, cultures. And we also did Black History Month, um, a museum or a, an exhibition that celebrated that um, and learned about, you know, different African cultures and the art and what it expresses. So, yeah. <laughs> I like that thing where, uh all paintings are unique, but also the artist is unique. Yeah. And so your kids are each unique. Oh, uh, for sure. Themselves. Yeah. Absolutely. I, that is also uh, something that's really, really important to me um, that I let them have a lot of uh, self-empowerment and individuality and, and feel like they can tell their own story when they come into my classroom. Um, I feel like not every class has that that ability for them to express themselves in that way. So when they come in my classroom, they are their own artist. Um, what they make in that room, I, I don't have to even know the meaning behind it. I don't have to know the whole story. Um, I'll say if they're if they're really in a zone, I'll be like, are you you OK? <laughs> and I check in. But I don't have to know everything because it's honestly not my business. They're as much of a human as we are. They might be younger, but uh, they have their own story. Wow. So their own stories. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this is um, part of the Black History Month um, uh, display. So we talked about different words um, while we were we were creating our artwork. So one of them was empathy. And that was definitely a big one that I touched on. As we're creating artwork, I kind of like to, you know, have a conversation with them and and say, hey, does anyone remember what empathy means? That big word. Even kindergartners, I'll have them say it. And um, I explain it to them as, you know, you you if you're sad or if someone else is sad, then you will also be sad that they're sad. Um, and if they're happy, then you're happy that they're happy. And, and it's as easy as that. And they, they get it. <laughs> and um, it's so funny that that's such a hard thing for us to, to understand as adults, as we age, it's harder 
to understand. So, yeah. Why do you think it's important for them to know about empathy? Well, I think it was probably the biggest, the most important word that we touched on because um, it has so much, it has so much feeling behind it. And it's not just, I had diversity as one of my words, unity, but empathy, it, it really is involved in every, every, uh, every like clash or every uh, confrontation that happens maybe in class. Um, it doesn't have to do with really deep topics. It can be something so light and empathy is just, oh, I'm so sorry that I, I accidentally hurt you or I'm sorry that you're going through that. It doesn't matter that we're different. This is What's just this? more of that. Yeah. yeah. So, so another word was unity. Um, so I was just trying to incorporate text into our artwork. So putting words into our artwork and then making it beautiful and making it really colorful um, while also learning about the meaning. And then also these, these quotes are also um, really important and famous quotes from uh, African-American artists, writers, musicians. Um, and if you, I don't know if you can actually read these, <laughs> but they had a lot to do with self-empowerment and, and self-esteem and confidence. And I think that's something that we can always use. Yeah. That's amazing. You put a lot yeah. of work into this, Annie. You put a lot of work into this. Thank you. And they did too. It's really them. <laughs> Doing it together. Yeah. Hey, yes. but, but tell me something. I'm, I'm, as I, I'm watching your enthusiasm uh, and how you feel about, how do you feel about these kids? Okay. Oh. How do I feel? I feel like I'd get emotional if I really say exactly how I feel, but I um I truly feel like they're they're like they're part of my family now as I go in every single day and and I'm I'm with them most of my day. Um I feel protective of them. I feel I truly love them. Honestly, I do truly love them. Um and I know it's hard to say when you have 350 students, <laughs> um, but they all are so unique and I learn something from all of them. I really do. I learn from them every day. Yeah. 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 And you watch them grow. Yeah. Um, so you love your children. I do. You love these kids. I do. You know, not just yeah. teach them. Uh, you really care for them. What do you want? We have some listeners now, right? People are listening to this feed. Yeah. This. And what do you really want them to know about your kids? The Armenians of, of Springfield, the Armenians of the diocese. What do you want mm -hmm. them to know about these kids that you love? Tell me. What, what I want them to know, um, what I want everyone listening to know is that these kids are, they're, they're just humans. They're little humans that just want to be understood and, and cared for. That's, that's the goal for every, everyone, every person, right? We just want to be understood, cared for, loved. Um, and they didn't choose, you know, maybe what they were born into or what hardships that they face every day. Um, but what we can do as adults, grown adults who have a lot of abilities and we have jobs and we have we have the ability to give um you know we can we can see who who needs the help in our community and and how can i help them and really will it take so much away from me to to help them it it's like it's a matter of time and honestly you'll probably gain in the end to help right. them right. yeah oh my gosh yeah. and, and just you know, just listening to you, your lessons that you're teaching K mm -hmm. through five kids. Yeah, we're all unique. I'm unique. I, start, yeah. I have a culture. Um, yeah. I'm terrible at art, honey. Really. <laughs> um, I'm but, sure you are. Yeah. Hey, but, so you want uh, everybody listening, the members of the Armenian Church throughout this diocese, we want them to love your children, understand yeah. your children, know your children, where they're coming. Absolutely. We all have an inner child 
inside of us and and i feel like as we grow older it's it there's like this invisible barrier that goes up between us and people who look different than us or who have such different upbringings um like i was i i grew up in a town very very different than springfield it's literally right next to it i'm right on the town line um my experience was completely different than these these kids experience and it's it's literally the town over and i've heard some stereotypical things about this other that in inner city any inner city honestly and um and it's funny how we age and in that that barrier kind of goes up and what i want what my goal my goal through our displays through our self empowerment and sharing with the world and coming together as 350 students and making one thing i want everyone to know that we're all we're all the same like yeah. we are all the same everyone wants the same thing would yeah. your kids know right now you want us all to know we're on you know yeah you're half exactly. a mile from them you're a mile from them um, yeah yeah, yeah. we're all one community exactly we're all one yeah them. right um, now um what uh, here is a rhetorical question so what can our listeners do and i just want to give a couple examples i shared this with you before honey mm -hmm. um the um, my hometown church here we yeah. adopted a grade school um and um, typical demographic as you're talking about. Yep. And um, we got into the school. So a few people wanted to tutor. And to tutor a third grader, all you need to do is know how to read. Right, you right. Know, you can read. You do <laughs> yep. the flashcards with them. Math, yep. you know, three plus two. I think we got all that, you know? Yes, yes. You can go into the schools, take kids to one side that need help. Uh, exactly. Uh, raise money of hey the school district can't afford uh, earphones or something. Yeah, you raise money for that. Um, if a kindergartner has an accident, you know what mm -hmm. I mean. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, we donate we donate new clothes so the kid can put on clothes for the rest of the day. Simple yeah. things. Yeah. So we can get to know your children. The Springfield Armenians can get to know your children better. Absolutely. Be one with them. Uh, and wherever we are, I mean, Absolutely. if you're in a suburb of Philadelphia, a suburb of Detroit, yeah, that's only five miles away yep. to go to one of your schools and yep. see your kids. Yeah, let's yeah. do that. Yeah, but, Ani, it has been delightful <laughs> talking to you. Thank uh, you. You I too. I can't wait to to run by Springfield sometime. <laughs> in Hartford, New Britain, Springfield, sometime soon, and see you. You're always welcome. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Um, hey, let's end this with a prayer, all right? Okay. What do you want me to pray for first? I always ask that of people. What do you want oh, me to Oh, man. Pray? I definitely want you to pray for my students and their families and uh, that, that <laughs> my students and their families and the, and the growth and uh, progress of our school, for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you're the one that said, let the little children come to me. And Lord, um, let the, the, the spirit of those little children come into our hearts. Let us now pray. Lord, watch over these 350 children, the children in the, that school district. Watch over the parents. Help them all to become safe and whole and continue to learn and grow and serve the community around them. Uh, watch over all of the teachers. Continue to inspire them. Um, the teachers who, who sacrifice so much of their life um, and continue to guide them, be with them, and encourage them. And Lord Jesus, the lover of children, Lord Jesus, we give you praise. Long to Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ani. Thank you so much. So it was it's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right. See you. Bye.